everybody here. I heard someone say they were from London. That's very exciting to have someone on here from London. Um, I have a survey. I'm doing a study right now that is actually funded by the Center for Women Entrepreneurs. And I am collecting data from women entrepreneurs. And the survey is all about how women entrepreneurs help women entrepreneurs and how we receive help from other women entrepreneurs. So I have a survey link that I have posted in the chat box and I would really, really appreciate it if you would uh, click on that survey and complete it after this session. It takes about 10 minutes to complete and it would really help uh, me and my co-authors and the Center for Women Entrepreneurship with this uh, study. So it's at the top of the chat box. So as we go on, I'll keep putting it further and further down as much as I can. Um, just give me one second, Dewana, and I'll um, grab it. Okay. And try to keep reposting it for you. We're live streaming on Facebook and we are recording. Okay. Well, great. Good morning, everyone. I'm Tracy Irby. Uh, I'm the Associate Director at TWU, Center for Women Entrepreneurs. We are so glad to see so many of you here today and even coming from as far as London. What a great reach. Uh, so happy to have you here. For those of you that aren't familiar with us, the Center for Women Entrepreneurs was funded by the state legislature just to help promote women in business anywhere in the state of Texas. And we do that through business advising, funding, networking and great training events like these. The Center for Women Entrepreneurs is part of the Jane Nelson Institute for Women's Leadership. The Jane Nelson Institute is dedicated to preparing women to take on successful roles in business and public service to ensure women have the education to establish careers as successful C-suite executives, the skills for bu building entrepreneurial businesses, and the framework needed to run for public office. So again, we're so happy all of you are here. Uh, Donna Lisa Stinyard is online as well, and she is the one that will be taking questions. So if you want to put those in the chat box, we will get those afterwards. And we have uh, Jody Rodriguez is over. She's here, but she's monitoring Facebook. So if any of you have questions on Facebook there, Jody will get them to Donna Lisa afterwards. So I'm so proud to introduce our speaker for today. We have Dr. Dewana Horn. She serves as Associate Dean, Associate Professor of Management at Texas Woman's University in the College of Business where she teaches graduate management classes. She holds a PhD in management from Jackson State University an MBA from Millsaps College, and a BS in Business Administration from Belhaven University. She was previously on faculty in the College of Business at Prairie View A&M University. She worked in management roles in the banking financial services industry for 14 years. Her research interests include organizational citizenship, behavior, behavior, leadership teams, positive job attitudes, well-being, and e-commerce success. Her research appears in several academic journals, and she has presented her work at national and international conferences. To bridge the gap between theory and practice and to stay, in, to stay current in industry, Dr. Horn co coaches women leaders and business owners on the same topics of her research and collaborates with several women-focused business organizations in Houston. So I'm so excited to have you here today for innov innovative piv pivots for your business, Dr. Dewana Horn. Hello, everyone. Good morning. It's early. It's, I'm not an early riser, so this is early for me, but good morning, and I'm glad to see you all here. Uh, welcome to TWU, and uh, I'd like to thank the Center for Women Entrepreneurs for inviting me to speak. It is such an honor 
to be with you all and all of these entrepreneurs who are on this call. And uh, first of all, I would like to just kind of start off with a, a little icebreaker. I would like to know uh, what you do. I just if you could type in the chat box, just one sentence, what do you do? What is your product? What is your service that you're offering or that you plan to offer? or that you have a passion for. So just let me know just in the chat box what it is that you do. Just like to know more about you. Okay, interior design, that's Darlene. Commercial interior design, okay. Youth leadership nonprofit executive director, boutique partner, okay, that's exciting. Research, wedding planner, cakes and cupcakes, all right. Photographer, software application developer, chief learning officer, fashion merchandising, essential oils, wow. Human resource consulting, wellness, seminars and workshops, Big Brothers and Sisters, a women entrepreneur nonprofit, okay, and a notary business. Okay, and then we have an undergraduate music therapy major at TWU who's looking to start her own business and a songwriter. Teach business owners to use the same financial strategies as multimillionaire corporations, all right? And we have, oh, we have a, a, a combat boots, jewelry. Oh, wow, I wear boots. I love cowboy boots. Okay, and um, a currently unemployed and refining a couple of business ideas. All right, that is exciting. Okay. I missed this one up here. Uh, marketing manager for a chiropractor. Just trying to make sure that I'm grabbing them all. Help veterans and families start and expand small businesses. We have a chief learning officer. Okay, so we have people who are on the move doing very good things. We have several industries represented here today. So this will make for an inter interesting discussion on how to pivot in, in your business. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Technology, don't fail me now. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this morning, we are going to discuss innovative pivots for your business. So all of, many of you are small business owners or aspiring to be small business owners. So I hope that this presentation will be valuable for you today. All right, so just a, a little about me. She's given this fabulous introduction. So I hate that I even have this slide in here, but I've been at TWU for 10 years now. I live in Houston and TWU is in Denton, Dallas and Houston. So I'm, I'm, I'm in at the Houston campus and I teach in the MBA program. That's the only program that the College of Business offers in Houston is the MBA program. So I've been teaching graduate courses for the past 10 years. One of the courses that I teach in the graduate program is the capstone course in the MBA program. And in the capstone course in the MBA program, that's where we integrate everything that the students have learned over their course of, of the course of their MBA study and they apply it and do something like a business plan to start a new business or analyze an existing business. So a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about here today are things that I taught my that I teach my students in that capstone class in the MBA program. So from that MBA program, we've had businesses that have been started that are still very successful today. 
Um, we have had uh, a lot of the students do the projects for grades, so we don't actually start businesses with them, but there are a lot of students who use that opportunity in that class to start their business and they have businesses that are still striving. I still consult with those business owners today. So I love uh, everything about women owned businesses. And I know that all businesses are the same, but I just have a passion for helping women. So today's discussion, here's our, here's our outline. I will define what it means to pivot. We will talk about strategy and specifically we will talk about blue ocean strategy. I will offer some tips to pivot in your business. I'll give you some recent examples of businesses who have pivoted. Uh, we'll talk a little about writing a business plan and then we'll talk about some resources. And then you have an opportunity to ask me questions. Okay. So one of my favorite uh, models, and if, if you see some letters on, on the wall behind me, but you can't see the whole picture, but one of the things that I just eat, sleep, and breathe, breathe by is this slogan, do what you love and love what you do. So I've, read, I've looked in the chat box and I've seen all of the things that you are doing, and I know that the things that you are doing, the missions that you have, the businesses that you have created, you have created those based on some level of passion for the products and services that you offer. And so before this, uh, before March, you were pretty much rocking along, doing what you love and loving what you do. You were profitable, you were, or, or you were ramping up to be profitable. You had your strategies outlined, you were in business, you had your partnerships, uh, you had your customers, you were satisfying their needs, you were distributing your products and offering your services. But then something happened. This coronavirus pandemic happened and it came out of nowhere and it is affecting everyone. We have people who are trying to be business owners who have had to put on another hat and become home teachers. A lot of you have become teachers to teach your kids at home. We have people who used to work in the office and who used to be very vibrant and attending events and attending work events and everything. And now we're all virtual doing everything via Zoom. We've had people who have been affected physically by the coronavirus, uh -huh. we've had the coronavirus. We've had, we, we have people who are going through some anxiety issues and, 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 and really emotional issues from being isolated all of a sudden. And so we're trying to figure out how to get through this. This, this pandemic has changed everything, everything. It has even changed the way we talk. We have added words to our vocabulary that we had not really been using. There are actually new words that have be been created because of this pandemic. And so I want to do just a little icebreaker. In the chat box, I would like for you to type new words that we are using. And, and it doesn't have to be a new word, but just a frequently used word in association with the coronavirus and the pandemic that we've been using since March that we were not necessarily using before March. I'm going to stop share for a minute so I can see your comments. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so Zoom, Zoom fatigue, uncharted waters, COVID-19, digital, okay, that's a new one for me, physical distancing, unprecedented times, new normal, new norm, social distancing, pandemic pudge, <laughs> yes, <laughs> virtual, drive-by birthday, yes, Mask queen? I haven't heard of that one yet. Reset. 
COVID brain, six feet apart, mask on. I love this. <laughs> Okay, so we have all kinds of new words that we have not used. Let's see, what else do we have here? Pivotal shift, yes, that's what we're talking about today. All right, so let me, if I can get back to my screen. All right, so here are, can you see me? Hold on. We can see you, Dewana, but not your screen. Not my screen. Okay, hold on. What about now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So here is here here we are. Here are some of the words that we we've been using: um, asymptomatic, patient zero, isolation, social distance. Contact tracing, PPE, contagious, vaccine, of course, Zoom and virtual. But this word pivot has come up a lot too, especially with you being entrepreneurs, you've been hearing it a lot. And people have been telling you that you need to pivot and you need to, you know, change what you're doing. <clears throat> so, and you've been told to pivot. We're in this VUCA world. So you're like, okay, what does this mean? How do I do it? This is a very, this is a VUCA environment that we're in, which means that this environment is full of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. So you're left to think like, how, how do I do this? What do I do next? You know, what do I do to stay profitable? What do I do to keep my customers? What do I do to make sure that my products get to the place that they need to be at the time and to the right person? What do I do to make sure that I am providing what my customers need? And what do I do to get new customers? Because some of my customers are not able to buy from me as they normally would be able to buy from me. A lot of your customers are having financial issues. A lot of your customers has, have had to change their priorities. So we are right in the middle of a VUCA world where it is volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And we have to figure out how to move on from there. So, uh, we are here for this Women Rise event, and one thing about it is that there is no force, absolutely no force, more powerful than a woman who is determined to rise. And the person who said it best was Maya Angelou, and she said, but still, like air, I'll rise. And that's what we're going to do. As women, we're gonna keep moving forward in our businesses, we're gonna rise, we're gonna continue to be the, the, the people who save this planet after this pandemic. So with that being said, women entrepreneurs are now wanted more than ever. Uh, Women-owned businesses are growing very fast. They have grown 21%, at least 21% each year since 2014. Female businesses generate 10% more cumulative revenue over a five year period than male owned businesses. Firms owned by women and people of color were fundamental to stabilizing the economy after the 2008 recession. We brought in 1.8 million, 1 .8 million jobs between 2007 and 2012, where businesses owned by white males lost 800,000 jobs during that same period. So uh, this pattern of prosperity that women see in, in their businesses, we, we continue to, to progress despite all of the obstacles and the barriers. And some of the obstacles, one of the main obstacles that we face is the dearth of funding. We get less than half of the funding that males get to run their businesses. But we are going to be the answer to a post-pandemic post world. We are the ones 
who are going to create jobs. We're going to be innovative. We're going to be creative. So if companies owned by women and people of color are able to stimulate the economy, guess what? Investors are going to get on board and they're going to start investing in our businesses. But we have to know how to go and get the money and how to, 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 to shift in order to make sure that our businesses continue to run well and efficiently. Okay, so the Delta Airlines CEO, Ed Bastian said it best. He says, the reality is our world needs you more than ever. Our businesses need you more than ever. Having lived through this tough experience, you'll bring a different perspective that we all need to know. While it'll be tough over the next couple of years for all of us, and we're having to live with unusual societal patterns, let's all hope and pray this is something that will truly, truly bring us closer together in the end. So that's what we're hoping for. So that brings us to pivot. The definition of pivot is to change a change in strategy without a change in vision. So when you set out to be business owners or as you think about starting your own business, you are going to develop a mission. And that mission is defines who you are and what you offer, the products and services that you offer. You also have a vision for what you want to accomplish out into the future. All right, so to pivot means to change the strategy. We're not going to change the mission and we're not going to change the vision because the mission was born out of passion. You went into business based on what you like to do, where your strengths lie, your experience, your knowledge, your expertise. And so you have to stick with your mission and you have to stick with your vision for what you see in the future. But what you do have to change is your strategy. You have to have a new plan of action. And a lot of you have already uh, realized that. And a lot of you are already going about establishing new plans of actions to make sure that you remain in business and that you survive and that you thrive past this pandemic. So that's what we're going to talk about the rest of this presentation. We're going to talk about changing your strategy, changing your plan of action, because I, this is my favorite quote right here. It's from Dr. Martin Luther King. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward and keep it moving. That's my motto in life. Keep it moving. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to pivot. We're going to keep moving forward. And we're going to tell you how to do that. So in my classes, I talk about when it comes to strategy, the theoretical perspective that I use the most in my classes is blue ocean strategy. And blue ocean strategy is based on the idea that every enterprise can achieve higher profit by creating new demand in a non-competitive market. So when it comes down to, uh, to blue ocean strategy, let's just kind of set the stage for this. So you have, um, blue oceans as compared to red oceans. All right, can someone tell me um, why an ocean would be red? Algae. Algae, okay. Pollution. Any other? Excuse me? Pollution? Pollution. Okay. Sharks. Excuse me? Sharks. Sharks, okay, sharks, okay. What 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 about sharks makes the water red? Well, is the it's the sort of the manny man or the sharks that's eating whatever it is that's causing the uh, that's killing stuff. Okay, you're it's right. the blood okay. from the sharks. It's the okay, so the, the sharks are killing things. They're eating up things, and then there's blood, right? So that blood makes the water red, right? When you think about an ocean, who wants to see a red ocean? right? The, the, the blood in, in the red ocean that I'm talking about, it comes, it doesn't come from sharks though. It comes from competition and it comes from, you know, people, fierce competition, people competing with each other and you're actually 
losing money. You're not as profitable as you could be. You're, you're really kind of struggling because you're in red oceans where these, these, the competition is like sharks and they're eating each other up. And the reason that they're eating each other up is because they are all going for the same customers. So basically you have this one pool of customers and you're all fighting for the same pool of customers. And the example that I like to use in my classes, um, and, and it's one that women can, can, can relate to a lot, I like to use the, the, the example of uh, nail salons. We all like to get our nails done, right? And whenever you see a new mall, especially being in Texas, whenever you see a new mall being constructed or a new strip, strip center or whatever, you know that one of the stores that's going to go in there is going to be a nail salon, right? <laughs> and so there's going to be a nail salon like with, within, within a five mile radius of your house. Uh, you can't even count the number of nail salons, right? And they, they basically offer the same service right? We go in there, we get a manicure, a pedicure, you know, some of them may offer some, some, some different services, but the point is, if I go into the one that's closest to my house, the one that I like, the one where I have a specific person that I request when I go and get my nails done, if I go in there and it's backed up and it's, you know, there are five, ten people ahead of me, guess what I'm going to do? I'm just going to leave and go to another one for that day. Like, I'll come back to this one next time. It's not that I'm just going to abandon it, abandon it, but I'll come back next time, right? And it's because I can go not far away and get the same service. And so these, these nail salons, they're, they're, they're very profitable, though. They would not be building them if they were not profitable. I'm just using this example, though, to show you just how, you know, you could be the offering the same product and then you are fighting for customers with offering this same product if it's so similar to what everybody else is offering. Now, if, and, and because of that, nail salons, they cannot really predict uh, how, when and, and if people will use their services. They, can, they don't have a loyal customer base. Uh, they always have to try to make sure that they're uh, really keeping on top of the trends that that people that women want when they go and get their nails done. So, in order, you know, a, a blue ocean. Uh, with, in, in contrast, there is just um, there are people in there who are not being served. It's blue because the waters are calm. There's no competition. You've got people surfing and swimming and you've got boats and kayaking and you know just all of this just undisturbed water. But guess what? The people who are in these waters, their needs are not being met. There, are, they, there, there is opportunity for companies to come into this blue ocean and create services for these people who are here. And so just uh, the way that I can compare this to like the nail shop example is just say that there are men in this blue ocean, right? And there, there were no men in the red ocean. We, it, they, these, red, these salons were just serving women. And they cannot predict when I will come into the salon versus another. Well, you have all these men out here who don't get their nails done. <laughs> they have no interest in getting their nails done. Okay, well, there are very, very few men who will, but for the most part, men don't get their nails done. So if there, were, if there was a, a nail salon service that opened, that catered to men and really, really figured out what men need to bring them into the shop, guess what? They would be very, very profitable. And it's basically creating new demand, creating demand that men didn't even know they needed their nails done. But you, you offered some kind of service or some kind of tweak to it to where now you've got men lining up at the doors coming to get their nails done. So that would be a blue ocean strategy to where you are catering to unmet needs, creating new demand in non-competitive markets. So that's the type of strategy that I like to talk about. All right, so with this, with this strategy and what's most relevant to 
today, uh, in, in today's world, is uh, right here, create and capture new demand versus when you're in red oceans, you're exploiting existing demand. So here are the comparisons of red oceans versus blue ocean strategy. So in red ocean, you compete in existing market space. In blue ocean, you create uncontested market, market space. In red ocean, you beat the competition. In blue ocean, the competition is not even relevant to you because you are doing something totally different from what your competitors are doing. In red oceans, you exploit existing demand. In blue oceans, you create and capture new demand. In red oceans, you make the value slash the value dash cost trade-off. In blue oceans, you break the value cost trade-off. And then in red, red oceans, you align the whole system of a firm's activities with this strategic choice of differentiation and low cost. And in blue oceans, you do the opposite and you align the whole system of a firm's activities in pursuit of differentiation and low cost and low cost. So here are some examples of uh, Blue Ocean strategy, the companies that have adopted Blue Ocean strategy. So back, let's see, when I moved to Texas in 2008, one of the first things that I was trying to do was to make sure that I went and got me a Blockbuster card <laughs> at the nearest Blockbuster store so that I could watch movies and, and, and do all that sort of thing. Where is Blockbuster now? <laughs> Nowhere to be found, right? Because Netflix and, um, and streaming services and all those things, they came in and they created something brand new that we didn't even know we needed. We didn't even know that on Friday nights, we didn't need to go to Blockbuster to watch a movie, that we could just turn on Netflix and chill, okay? And then um, Airbnb, they kind of, you know, created new demand for 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 places to stay when you go out of town. And then you have Starbucks. Who knew, you know, 20, 20, it's been a long time, but who knew that we needed to pay $5 for a cup of coffee? Who knew that? You know, but Starbucks came in and they took a 50, 25 or 50 cent cup of coffee and created a whole experience around it. And now we are buying, we are, People, can you realize that we are really buying $5 coffee these days? Okay, and then um, an example that, that we hold, um, true, hold near to our hearts here at TWU is Buzz Balls. Buzz Balls is an alcoholic beverage in a portable and disposable container where you flip the, if you imagine, a soft drink, a, a canned soft drink where you flip the lid off, right? So that's what Buzz Balls is. It's a very concentrated 21%, I think it's about 20 to 21% alcohol and a concentrated container, very flavorful, you know, a lot of flavors offered. But this um, was created by a person who, her name is Marilee Kick, and she was in the MBA program at TWU and she was in that capstone class that I described to you. She wasn't in my capstone class. She was before I got to TWU, but she was in Dr. Cruz's uh, capstone class. And she created a business idea for, uh, for a portable alcohol because her reasoning was that, you know, if you're at a pool party and you want to drink, you need to be drinking in something that won't fall and break on the ground. And also, she discovered that, you know, these young college students, you know, they party, they go to, to, to parties and they get things put in their drinks that can severely alter them and make them not well. So she figured that, you know, you could throw this little buzz ball in your purse and you can have your own supply of alcohol when you go to the party. You don't have to run the risk of being poisoned by someone or things like that. So anyway, here it is uh, um, several years later, 
she has worldwide distribution. She has a factory in um, North Texas. And she, this, this Buzz Balls is very popular, especially in college towns, just as she imagined. So especially in college towns and college students. And you can find this just about anywhere. And then after she created Buzz Balls, then you started seeing, you know, portable wines. You start seeing wine packaged differently and diff other different alcoholic beverages packaged differently but she basically created new demand for something that we already had which was alcohol but she just the whole experience of packaging it differently and making it more convenient and more safe for people is what is selling her product so she created an unmet need in that arena okay and then some other examples that we know of very well Facebook and YouTube started off as dating websites. So basically they jumped into the ocean, the red ocean of dating websites and they just were not successful there. And so each of them quickly moved. I think YouTube changed its um, strategy after five days. So they pivoted after five days because they had, um, they wanted people to upload videos talking about their ideal partner. And that was you, what YouTube was supposed to be all about. Well, guess what? Nobody uploaded any videos. It was just kind of awkward. And then there were other dating sites where you didn't have to do all that. And so it wasn't as intrusive. So after five days of no videos, YouTube said, okay, upload any video. <laughs> And so people just started uploading videos of whatever they wanted to upload. And then one year later, they were so profitable that they were bought by Google for $1.6 billion. That's how much money they made uh, after they pivoted. And then, of course, you have Facebook that started off as a dating website for Harvard students. And that was back in 2003. And they called it... Um, you, hot or not. So basically, it was just this game to where you post uh, pictures of female students, I guess. I don't know. It could have been males, too. I'm not sure. But it was like, okay, is this person hot or not? And then people commented on it. But anyway, uh, the, they, they had to pivot because they got in trouble. They got in trouble at school. They got in trouble for grabbing. It was privacy issues confidentiality issues, kind of bullying type of situations and all that kind of stuff. So they got in trouble and, and they got in trouble and, and were on the verge of being suspended from school and they had to pivot and change their strategy. So what they did is they started um, more of the social networking and they started social networking for Harvard students. And then they moved on. They started seeing where there were blue oceans where they could do other colleges in Boston, and then they moved beyond colleges in Boston and started doing universities in the U.S. and in Canada, and then they moved from there to corporations, and now everyone uses Facebook. So they just kept pivoting, pivoting, pivoting to where, to where they are now. So in, in these situations with buzz balls, with Starbucks, with Facebook, with YouTube, you know, these business owners had to continue to hone in, hone their strategy and hone in on their target market and hone in on their products and services in order to be profitable. Okay, so how do you go about even thinking about pivoting, all right? Well, now I'm getting ready to go to our textbook on you and talk about some things talk about some homework, basically, that you have to do in your businesses, because it's hard work, right? It's not easy being a business owner, all right? So you have to do some things to make sure that you are serving the right people, to make sure that you have the resources that you need to provide the products and services that you intended to provide. So one of the first things that you need to do when you're even when you're thinking about pivoting, and, and, and let me back up and say, most companies, there are studies to show that most companies, they 
they pivot because of problems. You can pivot in order to capitalize on new opportunities, which is what we should do. We should be very proactive in, in, in making our shifts and changing our strategies. But the reality of the fact is that most companies, most small businesses pivot because of problems, problems with profitability, problems in the environment, problems with distribution, inefficiencies, all those types of things. But, uh, and, and that's what we're dealing with now, we're pivoting because of COVID-19. But as a business owner, you should get used to doing this work right here to make, and, and not wait to be reactionary, to be very proactive and capitalize on new opportunities that are out there because there are always new opportunities. So what you, what you have to do is perform an environmental analysis. You need to look at your internal environment and look at your external environment. So when you look at your internal environment, you need to look at the products and services that you're offering. You need to look at, you know, what, 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 what resources do you have? What is your, what employees do you have? What financial resources do you have? And then you need to look at your external environment, look at your suppliers, look at your competitors, see what, always stay abreast of what your competitors are doing. You know, what is, what is going on the, in the economy? what is going on in the labor markets. So you need to constantly, constantly perform an environmental analysis. And that will allow you to review and hone your definition of your target market. Target market is so important. You need to know exactly who it is and be very specific about who you're serving because you need to continue to research that population to make sure that you know their consumer preferences and their, beha and their behaviors. Um, I've already said that you should study your competitors. Um, when you have customers, especially like now during COVID, you, are some, you already have customers. Talk to your customers, stay in communication with your customers, make sure that you know what their changing needs are and make sure that you know how your product or services services benefiting them and what they love about your product or what they don't like about your product and service. So talk to your customers, make sure you stay in contact via if you have a town hall or if you send out newsletters or, and it needs to be some type of two-way communication too. So you survey your customers, um, all types of things just to stay in contact with your customers. Also talk to your team, talk to your employees. Your employees are on the front lines. They are experiencing, you know, the, everything that it takes to offer your products and services. And they have ideas and they know where the, pro, you know, where the bottlenecks are. They know where some of the problems lie. And so continue, always talk to your team and talk to your employees so you can continue to discover, you know, what's right and what's wrong with your product and service. And then also, you need to continue to scan the environment to see what technology solutions are out there. You know, right now, Zoom is, I'm, I know Zoom is just very happy because we're all using it. I have been working as a kind of like a distant, distant worker for the past 10 years because I work at the Houston campus and all of my colleagues work in the Dallas and Denton area. And so I always have to attend meetings by Zoom or unless I come face to face, I have to attend meetings virtually. Well, guess what? In 10 years, it's been very hard to get that right. But when COVID hit, we got it right in like two weeks. <laughs> and now that's all we're doing is, is virtual calls, something that we could not get right all that time. So continue to um, consider technology solutions, test technology solutions out. And, you know, those, those things will help you to be able to know how you need to pivot. And when, you, when you're trying to pivot, you need to ask yourself some questions. What is the biggest problem? that I'm experiencing and how serious is the problem. Okay, and so then um, in order to actually uh, pivot, you need to make sure 
that your value proposition is there. What value do you deliver with your product or service? Are you fulfilling unmet needs? Are you creating new solutions? Do you create value with your existing assets? So uh, if, do you have, do you need to find new products or services for your existing customers or do you need to find new customers for your existing products and services? You, know, you need to build strategic alliances with other business owners, female business owners. We are very, we are very collaborative in nature as females, right? So we need to leverage that strength that we have and build alliances with each other in order to, to, to get through this. We need to make sure that we are helping each other as business owners and make sure that we're helping our customers. Make sure that we're caring about our customers. We're in, we're in, a, in a time to where it's all about safety. It's all about being healthy and well, and we need to make sure that we are caring about our customers and making them feel safe. And in order to um, hone in on your on your target market, I, I said that you know you should be communicating with your customers. They should be hearing from you a lot, and you should devise ways to hear from them. And one some of the things that you can do, especially in this virtual environment, is speak. You know, offer seminars, offer you know, Zoom presentations to educate your clients or to let them know how you're doing and what you're doing and what your plans are. You know, write about what you're doing so that other people can know about what you're doing. Blog about what you're doing. Sorry, oh, okay. Sorry, I, I went. okay, so then um, I think I skipped through. Okay, so your, your, value, your value network is how do you deliver and monetize? So you need to reconsider how you deliver your products and services. We all know that there have been um, disruptions of supply chains. So this is an opportunity for you to shift to radically faster, better, cheaper supply chains, which means that you have to study your suppliers, right? You need to connect through your partners and see how you can become allies with other businesses in order to offer your products and services and give more value to your customers. Some of your assets need to be repurposed. So, you know, your products and services, maybe you need to offer them to a different clientele during this time. And then you should change the way you monetize as well. So when you talk about change the way that you accept and receive payments, change, you know, have, diversify the way you receive money. So you may need to position yourself to where you can do more business to business transactions in this case, where there's more stable flow of money. Um, you need to make sure that you are uh, looking at all the technology that's available out there. All right. And so when you're, when you're trying to hone in on your target market, you need to look at what are the business and societal needs out there. So, you know, look at all these changing business and societal needs. We have an age, aging population. We have uh, millennials who are the largest population segment. We have women who are leaving the workforce because it's just too hard to balance it all. We have people who are working from home. We have climate cha change issues. Of course, we have issues with diversity, inclusion, and equity, and there are many opportunities there. There are, there's mental illness, there's confidentiality and privacy issues. So I put this list up here of business and societal needs just so to get you kind of kickstart into thinking, you know, what are some of the needs out there and how you could pivot to meet some of these needs that are out there in society. You know, these needs have, uh, will continue and there will be more added to this list, especially health, safety, and well being needs that have been brought about due to COVID 19. Okay. And write a business plan. I mean, I can't, that is, I, I cannot have this presentation without stressing that you should write a business plan to talk about what are the products and services that you offer, what is the business problem that you're trying to solve, who is your target market, and what is your competition doing. If you don't, if you don't write anything else down on paper, 
flesh out those four things. Okay, and here's some other tips to pivot and to make sure that you're moving in the right direction and, and communicating. Acquire professional certifications, get certified to do business with state and local and federal governments, join professional organizations and attend professional organizations. So there's SCORE, there's SBA, there's the Center for Women Entrepreneurs, there's um, join your local chambers of commerce so that you can keep abreast of what's going on in your immediate area, read journals and blogs and professional news outlets. And I, you know, I just would not be the business professor that I am if I didn't tell you to consider a degree in business. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'm going to use this time to market my program just a little. We offer undergraduate and, and graduate programs in all of the areas of business. So here are the, our undergraduate degrees that we offer in the College of Business at TWU. And here are the graduate degrees that we offer at TWU. And all of these degrees will equip you with the business background that you need in order to develop a mission, a vision, and strategy for your products and services. And then we have the Center for Women Entrepreneurs at Texas Women's University, which is just so helpful. Do you know that we awarded $110,000 grants right after COVID-19 to help female business owners? So stay in touch with the Center for Women Entrepreneurs. All right, so at this time, I'd like to um, know if you have any questions. So Dewana, we have, um, so Joy had a question. She wanted to know um, the best online companies to use in keeping your own records, invoicing and emailing the customers to keep everything in order. Hold on one second. Let me take this presentation down. Okay. User error. You should have a button to stop sharing screen. Okay, I see it. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. I didn't, I, I wasn't focusing. What, no, what that's I okay. So the best online companies to use in keeping your own records, invoicing and emailing the customers to keep up with everything. I'm not sure, Joy, if you want to pop on and share a little bit more. I'm not sure if you're looking for like a like an email platform or um, if you want to pop on, you can. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. It was um, more of, so keeping records, um, I've had um, in the past, you're trying to just keep my records in order. So I'm just looking for um, maybe a um, online, um, I'm trying to think of what, what the word is for it. Just my records, just keeping my records in order, but having all of that package where I don't have to use, you know, two or three different companies for invoicing and keeping, you know, up with the, the emails and things like that. Is there one specific good company that incorporates all of those into one? I think she's talking a CRM tool. Yeah, you're talking about a, a, a CRM tool. And I don't have a, an answer to, to that question because I'm not uh, in, in business in that, in that manner. But I know people, and, and you can contact me after this, and I can put you in contact with a person who is a guru on business processes. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. Thank you. Um, and then Joy also wanted to know, you mentioned blogging, like starting a blog. So she wanted to know what is the easiest way to start blogging? The easiest way to start blogging is just to sign up for one of the, the, the several blogging that there's Google blogger there. I mean, there's, I can't even name them all. I, I just know that I've used Google blogger, but sign up and just make you set a goal for how often you will write and just start writing just do it just start writing about what you love what you're knowledgeable 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 about make sure that you keep it short um make sure don't you know when you when you blog don't write things that are too long you'll lose your audience very quick you know people are trying to go through and read make sure that you have 
numbered or bulleted advice within your blog so that people can easily follow you and see the points that you're trying to convey and just go for it. That's the best thing that, uh, that I can say. I, I, I was blogging probably about five years ago and it's something that you really have to make a schedule for because uh, you, want, you want it to be regular and often. And whether people are reading it or not, just keep pushing it out there. It could be weekly, bi-weekly, twice a month, but just keep putting it out there. And um, Sharon, did you, S-H-A-R-Y-N, did you want to pop on and ask Dewana? Sure. Hi, Dewana. Hi, I can barely hear you. Sorry, right, I had my speaker turned up. Can you hear me okay now? Yes, yes. Hi. Hi. So um, I attended the, the MBA program at TW. It's excellent, by the way. Um, but obviously, a business plan is very intensive, right? And so I've recently heard about a concept called a business canvas. Have you heard of that? And what are your thoughts on that? And do you think that might be a, an option for people who may be intimidated by building an entire business plan? I think that I have heard of Business Canvas very uh, briefly, and I know that it is a streamlined way to write a business plan. I'll tell you, anything that will cause you to sit down and write it down will be good because there are so many business owners who are operating and they have not written anything down to kind of clarify their thoughts to be ready to get funding. You know, earlier in the presentation, I said that we get half the funding that male-owned businesses get. Well, one, when you go for funding, you have to have some sort of business plan for the lender to communicate with the lender about what you're doing. So any type of software or anything that would streamline the process of uh, businesses writing down their thoughts, their strategies, their plans, I, I endorse it. <laughs> So, and, and then when you were at TWU, the business plan that you wrote at TWU was an academic exercise, okay? Mm -hmm. It is not as complex as that team project that you had a whole semester to do. That was um, an, more of an academic exercise with research built into it and all those things, but you should be able to write a business plan. Like, I don't care if you have two pages written down write down what, what are your products and services, who is your target market, what are the problems that you solve, and who are your competitors. And then from there, you can write down, you know, how do you market? What, are your, what does your operations look like? What does your company organization look like? So you, just whatever it takes to write it down, I endorse it. And Sharon, just remember, so we use Live Plan at, at the Center for Women Entrepreneurs. Um, and Tracy um, Irby, who's also on here, she's our small business advisor. You can reach out to her and she will get you set up um, and get you started on heading in the right direction with that. And Elisa, can I jump in for a second? Sure. Um, I also use the business model canvas. So Sharon, I uh, sent you a quick email or a quick note in the chat, but it's actually right behind me. I use a business model canvas. I think it's a really great exercise and a way to streamline for your business plan. Happy to share that and anybody else on the call um, to kind of do that exercise with you. So um, I, I went through the strategizer class to learn it. Um, I think it's really helpful. Thank you. And maybe we can get together and offer a seminar on that, that software. I mean, that, that's, that's a, I, I've heard of it briefly, but it sounds like you know much more about it. And it sounds like that's something that a lot of business owners need to know more about. So Duana, we just have time for one more question and I think it, this one is super important. So we've talked about pivoting. So what if we pivot and it doesn't work? Should we close our business? No, you should not close your business. You should pivot again. <laughs> and, 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 and pivoting again, you should make sure that you are looking at some of the considerations that we talked about in this presentation. When you did it the first time, you probably did not do as much research as you needed to do before you changed your strategy. So I would advise that anyone needing to change, change their strategy, make sure that you put in the work and do the research that is required before you go down that path. 
And if, you, if you've already gone down a path that's not working, do it again. We keep moving forward. That's what we said earlier. Keep it moving. Awesome. Thank you so much. Tracy? Okay. That was such great information today, Dewana. Thank you so much. I know it can help so many, uh, so many of our uh, viewers <laughs> uh, and entrepreneurs. So again, we really appreciate it. Everybody, we are going to send out uh, the video along with the uh, presentation for today. I uh, also want everyone to know that all of our past presentations you can now find on our YouTube channel. Uh, we also did this one on Facebook Live. I uh, want to let you know of some of our upcoming events. Uh, November is going to be our Women Rise is going remote, a uh, behind the scenes look at digiti digitizing your business. And then on December 13th, we're gonna have Shirley Staten. She's gonna talk about long-term financial changes and future facing strategies for your business. And very important, our Start Her Grant is still open. You have till 5 p.m. on Friday to apply for that. As part of that, we do a small business training course, but everybody is invited to attend that. That's gonna start on November 3rd at 5.30 p.m. to 7, and it's gonna be a five-week series. So again, everybody is welcome to join us in that. So thank you again, everybody, for attending. We hope to see you again soon. And Dewana, thank you again for this today. Thank you for having me, I appreciate it. And we have a quick poll if you um, feel inclined to take it, we would appreciate it. Oh, great. Thank you for that. And let's not forget that we do have uh, the information you posted for your research, Dewana, is in the chat box. And there it is. Everybody, please take 10 minutes to complete my survey. It is specifically for women entrepreneurs and I, my co-authors and I are trying to look at helping behaviors among women. So how women help each other and how they receive help from others as business owners. So please take 10 minutes to complete uh, that survey. It will be very helpful to my co-authors and I and to the Center for Women Entrepreneurs who is funding the research. This was great as always. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Elaine. Have a great week. Off to go vote. <laughs> Thank you. Dewana, if you could send me the slide presentation and I'll send it out with the replay link. We had a lot of people asking for it, so. Okay, sure. If you don't mind. Sure, okay. All right, we're gonna go ahead and end the poll in a couple seconds here. About five more seconds, give everybody enough time to take it. All right, perfect, thank you. All right. All right, I'm gonna leave now. <laughs> Thank you, Joanna. Thank you all. I really appreciate it. You bet. Bye bye. I'm taking pictures because it's always easier to read than their stats. All right.